Learning how to layer elements in your production can be a huge advantage because that's really how you start to create these big kind of wall of sound productions that don't have a million different things happening that just kind of confuse the listener. So we've talked a lot about layering on the channel, but I've never actually shown you my process in real time. So in this video, I wanna show you a production and we're gonna start to layer things. And I wanna explain when to layer, why to layer, and how to layer, and some things that you might wanna watch out for when you do start layering elements on top of each other. So we're gonna dive in and check all of that out in one second. But before we do, my name's Austin, you're watching Make Pop Music. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe because we have production videos every single Friday. Other than that, let us know what video Videos you want to see in the comments down below because we listen to your request and then after the video if you want to support us you can head over to our website makepopmusic.com check out all of the cool stuff that we have over there including a ton of free content for you as well so go check all that out let's dive in and let's look at layering so right now for the production we only have a couple elements we have some basic drums and then we have a little bass and we have a couple synths so we kind of have everything that you need for the general arrangement we're not going to be adding anything new in terms of melody or chords or anything like that we just wanna take what we have right here and kind of build it up. So here's what we're working with. So the main things that I wanna start layering are we have this pad right here that's really cool. It's actually just a like pad taken out of serum and I've put infiltrator and a couple different effects on it that transform it from this to this So what I want to do is I want to copy that layer and I want to copy it with those effects because any new sound that I'm putting on it, I want that infiltrator and that beat grader to still kind of impart that sound. So one important thing to keep in mind when you are layering is, are you trying to get a sound that is really going to blend with the original? Because if so, doing something as simple as just duplicating this and then just picking a new sound to kind of swap might be the way to go. So you could easily pick this and then you could just kind of shuffle through different presets and you need to kind of decide what you're looking for. So when I'm layering, there's a couple different things that I might be layering for. It may be to add a bit of width to the stereo field. So maybe I want a sound that's a little bit wider, or maybe I want to pick two sounds, one that I'm going to pan one way and one that I'll pan the other. Sometimes you want a different texture. And if that's the case, then you just need to find something that might be made with a completely different preset or a completely different waveform or a completely different instrument in general, because that will impart a lot of that different textural difference. And then you might be trying to get something that adds a little bit of length or a little bit of sustain. So think if you have like a really short pluck that you really like the tone of, but it's just kind of a little dry, it's a little weird. And every time you try to add reverb or delay, it just kind of messes with that. Maybe instead you just add a softer pluck that has a longer decay and a longer kind of tail behind it. Um, or you could just add something because you wanna add thickness and you wanna add punch and you wanna add depth. So. There's a bunch of different things that you need to kind of keep in mind while you're doing that. So for this synth, what I want to do is I want to get something that's not so mid heavy because we have a lot of the mids controlled in that kind of original pad. And I want to get something that has a little bit more resonance to it, a little bit more brightness to it, but not overly bright. One of my favorite things to do too when I'm layering is to start diving into different synths. So we're going to try this one that I found in Faded Keys from Cradle Audio. They have all the state machines that are really, really sick. And this is a preset that I have that uh, I'm basically just using the exact same processing on. It sounds like this. So like I said before, I'm trying to get something that has a little bit more resonance. It's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit shinier. And so I'm doing that and I'm just kind of blending that with this lead one. And the first thing that I like to do when I'm trying to make two sounds fit together is for one, just get the level right. So rather than doing a ton of EQ moves or putting a ton of compression or saturation, just get the level how you want it generally. And then you can kind of fine tune it from there. So I feel pretty good with this moody pad, like right around here. So it's, it's a bit quieter, but we're just using it as an accent layer. Almost doesn't need to be heard. It just kind of needs to be felt. And then one thing that I like doing is I kind of want to use this to add a little bit of width as well. 
and I kind of want to keep it out of the center of my stereo field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plugin called Center. This is by Waves. And uh, typically, I just use it to kind of pull the center out and boost the sides or vice versa. So if I engage it, you can see that we're pulling the center down about 18 dB and we're boosting the sides about 2 dB. And it just gives us a little bit of a wider stereo field. And doing little things like this can really help sounds not step on each other. So now when I play it with that gentle pad, let me show you what it sounds like with I when I have center engaged and then when I turn it off. Just kind of thins it out, kind of pushes it to the side, and it does exactly what I need it to do. And now we have those two scents that I think really work together as one. If I was playing that in the arrangement, you wouldn't even know there's two things happening. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and let's add one more layer that's kind of gonna do those same exact chords. And this one, I want to add a little bit of consistency and a little bit of length. So for this one, I don't really wanna copy that super gated, super kind of crushed sound that we're getting from Infiltrator. For this one, I just want a nice soft pad that will kind of sit underneath everything. So I can just go into Serum and I can duplicate this and essentially just take off all of the effects and then I'm gonna pop into Serum. So now I'll just kind of let this loop and I'm gonna kind of engage it with these other two scents and just flip through presets. No, rise is too slow, not really what I want. Way too bright, way too loud. That one could be cool. It's a little high for me, so maybe take that down an octave. I'll try a couple more. I kind of like the ramp up of that, so maybe I could just drag this down an octave or two. Maybe we do something like that and we speed it up. And then now let's get that processed so it kind of fits in with the others. So I dragged it down one more octave, and the only thing I really want to do is pull back on this cutoff filter so it's a little bit quieter. That's kind of doing exactly what I need to do. Now I'll do a little bit of EQ. I just basically did kind of some shelving just to rebalance it. And again, it's a nice element that you can't even really hear. You just more so kind of feel it in there. So without those two elements, we have something like this. With them, we have something like this. Nothing about the song is fundamentally changing. We're just adding width, we're adding depth, and we're adding texture. Now, let's go ahead and let's layer up these lead scents because I go through a little bit of a different process when I layer leads uh, because they're typically a little less ambient and it's a little bit more important how you dial these in. So here's what we have. So it's just a little loop that I got out of Arcade and I really like what it's doing. I've chopped it up and kind of made something completely new. But what I want to do is I want to layer that with a new key sound. And I'm kind of feeling like I want to go for maybe like a 40s style key, like something that you'd hear in like a Drake production. So I'm going to open up Contact and then I'm going to go through some of the 40s keys and see what we can get. Here is one that I found. You can kind of hear what it sounds like. It's really resonant, so I'll need to tame that a little bit. But let's hear how that kind of plays with the kind of lead one that we already had. I like that. I just want to do some processing so it fits a little bit better. The first couple things that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some EQ right here, just because... I want to take out quite a bit of those lows, low mids, and mids, and I'm going to boost the top in. And then I'm going to add this Haas right here just to kind of spread it out, because again, I don't need that right up the middle. And then I'm going to hit some Pro-Q just to really start taming some of these resonances.
So now, when we tuck that with the original synth, we're getting it out of the way with that Haas effect. We're kind of cleaning it up with some different EQ. And now it's gonna sit into the mix. And then one thing that I wanna do is I wanna layer that same element with something that is an octave lower that can just add a little bit of body and consistency because both of the sounds that we have right now are pretty resonant and pretty ringy. So I wanna add another sound and I have one right here that I dragged in off camera. And when I was looking for this, I basically just wanted something that was going to allow me to add a little bit of kind of body. So as you can see, it's still super wet, it's still super washy, but I'm not having any of those super hard kind of resonant transients that we were getting in the other sounds. And then again, for this one, it's just some basic EQ. Like I don't do anything too crazy when I'm blending sounds. It's mostly leveling, figuring out if things need to either be panned or have some kind of like spatial processing on them, like a chorus or a doubler or a Haas effect. And then really just kind of getting rid of info that I don't need. So if I turn this off, you'll hear how thick the sound is. I don't need any of that, really. I can really just do a low cut all the way up to like 500 and then just do a high shelf because I'm really just trying to thin this sound out. It's just a layer. And now when you hear all of those things in context of the actual instrumental, we go from something that sounds like this to something that sounds a little bit more like this. The only other thing that I would start to do is use layering as a way to kind of build up the dynamic. So right now what I would do is when this big kind of kick and 808 and everything comes in, I would probably layer one more little pad that's just doing a high octave that kind of pedals. And then I would probably add another um, kind of layer to this little synth pluck lead that we have. And I might pan those left and right. So then we have a kind of wider lead. We have a top kind of pad or arp or something like that that adds a little bit of extension to the top end. And then other than that, I would probably layer up this, this little rim hit right here with some kind of more percussive clap. Just because that's not really cutting it. So I'm gonna add those things and kind of show you what I do to them and then that to me is about all that I would do. So when I'm talking about a really thin pad, this is exactly what I mean. It's got some granular texture in there. It's got a little bit of grain. It's got some like wobble to it. It's really nice. It's just the S key out of our Lush pack. And again, I'm just gonna control that with some EQ and filtering, just doing a really heavy band pass because that's really all I want. I don't need those really kind of resonant mids down here that are the fundamentals of the note. That to me is gonna start to kind of step on my mix and it's gonna start to cloud that, you know, 800 to 1.5K, which is really where a lot of the vocal will sit. So when you can start to kind of sculpt different elements, you can get away with adding a lot into your mix because they all have their own place to sit. And then just to add a little bit of extra texture and width, I'm gonna add this chorus. Um, it's just like a Juno style chorus and I'm painting this 100%. So it's super, super wet without. It's a great way to just get it out to the sides, add a little bit of extra wobble and texture. And when I do those two things, you can see how much better this will simply blend in. As soon as I take all the effects off, you can clearly hear it and it's really distracting. But then as soon as I mute it, it takes away a lot of energy from the song. You almost don't realize that it's gone until it's muted, and then you can kind of feel this weird presence that is lost in the high mids. And that's what I'm trying to do when I'm layering. I'm really just trying to add like an extra five or 10%. I'm not trying to do something that is completely like reinventing the sound or reinventing the wheel. I just wanna add something to kind of fill different areas of the spectrum that might have holes in them based on the arrangement or the production that I already have. And then, 
kind of keeping a similar fashion, I talked a little bit about using two different sounds to pan. So I went into the State Machine's Faded Keys again and found two different leads. I found the Friendly lead and then I found the R and Bring Me Home. And I'm panning these 100% left and right because what that's doing is that's giving me a really wide stereo field that's an octave up. And now when I play everything, I might pull those down a little bit. Let's pull them both down four or five dB. And then the last thing that I do is just kind of layer up some of these different drums and percussion. So I'm gonna put a nice big roomy snare right here. Kind of fills out the mids, adds a lot of that length, and then I'll add a clap right here. And now that you have all of your sounds, you can kind of pick what you want to stay together. So this is kind of the phase where I'd flesh out the structure of the production, but then I'd probably start printing out things as layers. So like these pan synths right here, I'm honestly, later in my process, probably just gonna render those down to one audio file. So then I can EQ that, compress that, saturate that, and pop that in the mix wherever I want it to be. I'm a big fan of like using a bunch of different separate things. So let's call this high wide synth lead. And now we just have this one little stem and now I can process this stem as its own thing. And when I'm layering that to me is like a big part of figuring out where I want things to sit. Now I can just process that as one thing. I could do the same with these two pads right here, probably comp these together. You can also start to kind of pick and choose different areas of your arrangement that you might want to take certain things out. So like, let's say that for this second half right here, we want to take some stuff out and we want the, the vibe to just completely change. You could kind of do the opposite. You could kind of start to layer up things. So we could do, you know, keep this going right here, keep this going right here, take all of this out for the first couple, you know, four to eight bars. And that's a really good way to build a dynamic production where you can add a new thing every four bars, but it's not a new you know, completely different element to the arrangement that's distracting the listener, stepping on the melody, getting in the way of the vocal. When you can learn to layer like this and you can really create these big sounds that kind of take up an entire spectrum, you can get these big, wide, full, super dense arrangements that still have room for a vocal, they still have room for a groove, they, they still have room to pull things out and put things in in terms of like creating a dynamic structure. So if you enjoyed this video on layering, let me know. If you have any questions about layering, let me know in the comments. There are no like really, really big, rules I would say. I would say the general thing is like know what kind of sound you're looking for and why you're layering it. Then once you find something that's kind of generally what you need, figure out how you want that to kind of combine in terms of level and then figure out what you want to do in terms of EQ of making each thing have its own kind of frequency space. And then you can figure out do I want things to pan? Do I want things to double? Do I want things to sit right in the middle? Just kind of play around with it. But it's it's really just a game of of having a million different things that you can kind of do in your production, even though we only started with like three different elements. This ended up being, you know, nine different tracks. So let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Let me know what videos you want to see in the near future. And like I said, if you want to support us, head over to makepopmusic.com. You can check out our sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs. We have a start to finish production course. That is all over there. But I'll see you guys next week with more content. Much love, everyone. Peace.